If I got it, you got it. If you love it, I love it. I don't really want problems. It's all about me. I heard you be talking. It's all about me. Body been watching. Welcome, gang, to our SGB it, 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 here in the city of Chino. My name is Javier Miranda, and here I do new gen ministry. My name is Angie. I'm from Ontario, bilingual, and I actually am a part of the gang team there at my church and the newcomers and following up. Man, and we're, right now we're actually taking part in our SGV East Regional, and the theme for this regional is known as New Heights. And we, I know we do have family that has actually traveled a bit far to yes. join us here tonight. So I know we have the UTC West Coast here. We have the Third Wave Leadership Campus joining us also. And I also heard that we may have Sister Brittany in the house. Amen. And we have all of you right there at home watching us live, VFAM. I also heard we have some regions here, so I'm going to shout out your church. And when you hear your church, I want you to make some noise in there. We have uh, Vio West Covina. We have Pomona, Ontario, <gasps> Anaheim West, Temecula, and Corona. Isn't it so amazing that we all get to come together as a region? And I know we have a few new regions, so shout out to them. Shout out to them. It's, it's so good to, to fellowship with family, to see people who you know, are serving the same mission as we are. And we actually just came out of a really big event, right Angie? Yes, we actually just had New Gen Unites yesterday here at the Church of Chino, you know, the mother church. It's where all the New Gen came together from around. And it was amazing to see them all come together, just seeing the presence of God fall over them. And it just reminds me when I was in New Gen and the fire that I had, so it's great to see the upcoming generation have that same fire. Amen. It was it was such a blessing to even just be a part, to see the students uh, be touched by God, you know, to see them in, in deep prayer. And I know they had a lot of fun too. Definitely. We had, we had a lot of snacks. We had a VIP room. And then right after the event, we had a four-way dodgeball tournament. And I don't know about you, but I was trying to win, right? I was I was right there aiming for the sixth graders. I'm not gonna yeah, lie. Yeah, I heard all the leaders were involved, so Amen. you can imagine how that went. All the yeah. new gen having the opportunity to be able to throw a ball at their leaders. Imagine. I, I, I I'm pretty sure if I were a new gen, I'd be taking out any <laughs> anger on my leader. But with that being said, we have something very special for you. We had a student who actually attended. New Gen Unites, and I'm gonna call her up right now. She's gonna give you a brief testimony of her time. She's there. actually a gang girl, so she's representing tonight. Just right here, so we have Mariah. So I'm just gonna have her quickly just introduce who she is, what grade uh, she's in, and then what did you experience right there in New Gen Unites? Um, my name is Mariah, and um, I'm in eighth grade, and I'm 14 years old. And yesterday what I experienced was God, he really touched my heart because lately I have been falling off, but God yesterday, he was, he was speaking into me like a different way where, um, where I could, where he was speaking to me, where he's telling me, do not give up, just keep pushing to give 99, to give a hundred percent instead of 99%, give me, give, he's telling me, give me your all. And I just learned that that he just talked to me in a different way. I thank God that he has provided in different ways and he's been so good. Hey Amen, that's so powerful. And Mariah, just real quick, what was one of the funnest things that you experienced? Maybe one of the things that you weren't ex you weren't expecting to take place uh, right there at New Gen Unites? Um, something that, so what was fun is I got to meet other believers and other Christian kids and seeing them happy, seeing them, seeing them um, give their all to God and cry out to him. Thank you, Jesus. And um, something that happened was um, I was getting talked to a lot. I was realizing that instead of giving 99, give him all, give him everything, drop everything and give him all in. Tell other people so you could be the light of this world. Hey Amen. that's so powerful, Mariah. And just one last question. What's something that you're going to be taking to your school uh, from what you learned here at New Gen Unites? Um, something that I'm going to be taking to my school is telling other kids about God and telling them what Jesus has done in my life and telling them that he has died on the cross and telling them that there is something better than, than doing bad 
there's someone better and someone who cares for them that Jesus died on that cross for everyone. We thank you, Jesus. And I just want to tell other kids and let them know that the joy that he has brought me into my family and other kids. Amen. Thank you so much, Mariah, for your testimony. We appreciate your time. Um, and thank you for your testimony. Yes. Wow, it sounds like all the gang girls are always on fire. That was powerful, right? It was so powerful. It's, it's so good to hear from our students. Really, the, the reason uh, why we do any of these events, right, is so that the people who attend, you know, could be blessed. Um, and I'm just, I'm just so reminded, you know, of the importance of ministries like New Gen and HSI. And I'm blessed to hear the testimony of one of our own New Geners. Yeah, it's so amazing to see what God is doing across, you know, not just here, but internationally. But I also want to go back to our service tonight, how you mentioned our theme is Greater Heights. And for those who don't know, you know, it's, it's about how God takes us to greater heights. But not only that, he also takes us deeper. And so I just want to ask you tonight, um, a question was, what areas, areas do you feel God is taking you deeper in? That's, that's such a great question, and, and it's just in line with, uh, you know, what I've been praying about these last couple of weeks. And I think the areas that God is taking me deeper in is in the area of faith. Um, I've been reading this book, and it's about the faith that Abraham had. And it's really just uh, been touching me and just showing me that, you know, the, the faith that Abraham had, I can have in my own personal life. And so I recently just uh, took a step of faith uh, at the beginning of this year and went full time on my business. And so I'm learning really to, to have faith that God is going to come through. He's going to bless the business. He's going to bless my work. And knowing that because this idea was something from him, that I can, I can put trust in him. Uh, in his provision, um, and, and as long as I put him first, that he's going to come through. So that's one of the areas that I've been going uh, deeper in is the area of faith. But Angie, I also want to know, <laughs> what areas has God been taking you deeper in? Well, for me, it is just going deeper into his presence, just really finding that secret place, that place of intimacy, just getting close to him, drawing near to him, and just learning how to hear his voice. You know, and just recognizing when it's him speaking to me. And really just about spiritual warfare as well. Just getting into prayer when those times come where the enemy is coming to attack. You know, your mind and just putting doubt into your mind, confusion, that feeling of being lost. And I feel like God is just trying to take me deeper into his presence and just being able to fight against those forces. Because you know that fight is not against flesh. So we have to just go deeper into his presence, just find that intimacy with God and find that secret place, have communion with him. Amen, that's, that's powerful. I have another question for you, Angie. The question here is, what are some areas for growth in this new year for yourself? There's a lot of places, <laughs> but I wanna say the main place is just having a heart for the souls. You know, that's what our ministry is about, just heart for the souls, having a passion for the people, just going out and just evangelizing to them. And I know that that's something I need to learn more, be, just being out of high school not too long ago. And I'm still learning a lot about having a love for people, having care for people. So I want to say that's what, that's what it is right now, is just having a passion for people, more of a passion, just having that bigger burden. Yeah, just having a heart yeah. for people, right? That's all, that's that's what our ministry is about, right? Treasures out of darkness. And I'm curious right there, VFAM, if you're watching, what are some areas for growth for yourself? And then also for our other question, right? Drop, drop your answers right there in the comments. For myself, areas of growth, I would probably say I want to grow uh, in my spirituality. So I want to take it to a whole different level. Um, I've, I've really been hearing this from God, and it's that if we want revival, uh, revival requires a church that is spiritual. And so that's something that I want to partake in. I want to make sure that I, I'm, I'm uh, you know, contributing to the spirituality of the church. Um, and, and that's something that I'm looking forward to, you know, really partaking in this year. Wow, it's, uh, it's amazing what God is doing right now. I'm excited for what God is going to do tonight. I know there's going to be a big move of God. And just make a prayer. Just pray before service starts that he takes you deeper and that he takes you to greater heights. Amen. And I'm so excited to see you guys right there in the sanctuary. We're about to go right in. But just thank you so much for coming out. You all, We, we all are really family. I'm grateful for you all. And in about five seconds from now, we're going to go right back into the sanctuary.
I'ma tell you what I think If you got to hold it down, get my type bro Sliding left, so now we sliding right. My force is black, I couldn't do the white. They let go, take off on them. Uh, Cause who have baby, I'll settle that noise. Bustin' they, bustin' they shootin' that boys. We runnin' like both, give a hope to our folks like you. Whoa, I had to find my truth, drop the booze. I had to pay my dues and make some moves. Yeah, big top 40. <laughs> yeah, me and my wounds. <laughs> yeah, coming through, bustin' out those guys like these, like these. Good luck.
If you got a vibe, then let it down. Can't hold these emotions inside ourselves. I'm so high, I ain't coming down to give them the glory. What we're about, we ain't step inside the benefit of thank God. Man, you could have been broke with no job. Man, I should have been lost with no hope. And when I really think about it, I'm grateful. Look how we made it this far, still we're not close. It's still land of possessing it to flame on. When I think about his grace, I'm just thankful. So when I step inside the building, get my praise on. Shout of praise if you came to give him glory here tonight. Hey, hey, say that everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Come on, say, praise the Lord. That everything, that everything, sing that has breath, that has breath. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. God praise in the valley, hey, praise on the mountain. Praise when I'm sure, praise when I'm doubting, yeah, I'll praise when outnumbered, praise when surrounded, come on, cause praise is the waters, my enemies drowning, can you help me sing that here tonight, sing, sing, as long as I'm breathing, I've got a come on, let's go. It's 
more than a sound. Just somebody shout. My praise is the shout. Come on. That brings Jericho down. Come on. As long as I'm breathing, say, I've got to reach. Come on and shout it. Give them a lot of shout of joy in this room. Hey, hey, we came to bless your name, God. We came to glorify you. Come on. Oh, praise because you're sovereign. Praise because you reign. Praise because you rose and defeated the grave. Oh, praise because you're faithful. Oh, praise because you're true. Praise because there's nobody greater than you. Come on, say. Does anybody believe that here tonight? That he is able to do it all. Come on, say. Oh 
all of my fear I will turn into praise And shake up despair As I sing out your name Oh, victory dance I will dance out in faith I will crush disappointment and break Can you help me sing that? This I sing. Say, break every chain. You sing. Come on, easy. Say, say, break every chain. Say, you sing. Say, oh, break every chain. This I. Hey, oh, break every chain. Say, hey, break every chain. Come on, break every chain. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. I know we have different churches here in the room here tonight. We have West Covina, come on. We have Pomona, we have different churches in this region. So here tonight, I want you to praise him. What I mean by that, I want you to give him a shout like you've never done before. I want you to give him a dance like you've never done before. Are you ready? I said, are you ready, gang? Ready? We're gonna count to three. I want you to give him a shout, a dance. I want you to break out, break out, and stop praising. Ready? One, one, two, one, two, three, go! Because I still see a couple people that are just, mm, I, I don't really feel like it. Pastor Moises, can, can I tell him what you said? Pastor Moises said this. He said, 
He looked at me. He said, hey. I said, ¿qué pasó? He said, he said, something brand new is going to happen tonight. But here's the thing, here's the thing. Something brand new can't happen if you're not willing to do something brand new. Come on, if you, if you want to see God break out tonight, you have to be willing to break out tonight. If you want to see God step out, you're going to have to begin to step out yourself. Come on. So, Ed, I, I want you to bring it back right now, but I need you to begin to move like you've never moved. I need you to begin to praise like you've never praised. Come on, Ed. Little bit low, say, there's revival in the game today. Little bit louder, little bit louder. Revival in the game today. Little bit louder, little bit louder. Little bit louder, little bit louder. There's revival in the game. There's revival. Yeah, revival, say. Come on, revival. Okay, there's revival. There's revival. Revival in the church. Ready, ready, ready. I got the Holy Ghost upon me right now. Come on and say it. Holy Ghost. I got the Holy Ghost. I've got the Holy Ghost. I've got the Holy Ghost upon me. Holy Ghost upon me. Holy Ghost upon me. Somebody give them a shout in the room. Hey. Come on. On the count of three, the Bible says that man, in, the, in, the, in the praises of his people, that's where God rests. So on the count of three, we, but we're gonna have to break out of the religiousness a little bit tonight. We're gonna have to break out on the count of three, because I don't know about you, but I, I've been set free. Come on. I don't know about you, but I was all tore up. Come on. But it wasn't until a man named Jesus, it wasn't until a man named Jesus. So on the count of three, Give your shout your highest praise. One, two, three. Come on, Jesus. 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 We're going to take it old school. Give me a J. Give me an E. Give me an A. Give me a U. Eh? Who saved? Who lived? Who lived? Jesus. Woo. Give a hand for the Lord tonight. Come on. No, no, we can't. Like, we got to keep it going, man. We got to keep it going, man. Man, we're so excited for what's going to take place tonight, guys. We want to welcome you to Victory Hours Chino, the mother church here, on behalf of all of the gang leadership team, as well as all of the, the regional team. And we're so excited for what's going to be taking place tonight. How many know God's already in the move? Matt. I think that was something prophetic because I'm, I'm already seeing something brand new take place. I'm, I'm already sweating. I said, goodness. Man, but tonight, guys, so, man, it's going to be an awesome, awesome night. I need everybody, since we're already all together, I need everybody to take your phone out. Take your phone out if you have your phone right now. Take your phone out. Take your, UTC's like, I got nothing. Take your nugget books out, Pathways. <laughs> take your phone out. <laughs> take your phone out. That's what we're going to do right now. And if your phone's at your seat, you can grab it. But what we're going to do is I want us right now to go find somebody that you've never met before, ever in your life, and you're going to take a selfie with them, and you're going to tag Vio Chino Gang. So go ahead right now. Go, be, go find somebody you've never met before. Next two minutes. Make sure you're tagging VO Chino Gang. Tag the VO Chino Gang, you'll get reposted.
All right, all right. I've seen everybody take selfies, man. But again, we are so excited for everybody here and what's taking place already so far. Again, how many know God's already on the move? Come on. I don't know about you, man, but I want to leave different tonight. I want to leave different tonight. So, man, um, raise your hand if you're able to go to New Gen Unites this past weekend, right? I hope we all found Jesus like Pastor Ray's message was about, man. How many know it was powerful, right? It was an awesome, awesome service. And, man, I know God's going to continue to move not only in the New Gen, but he's going to move in the high school impact. Come on. Also in the young adults here. But before we go any further with that, I want us to go ahead and watch our recap we're able to make for you guys. Something's very valuable to you, you can still lose it. My name's AJ and I serve God for life. My name is Timothy Asliga Sanoza and I serve God for life. My name is Naomi and I serve God for life. My name is Sovereign Vasquez and I'll serve God for life. My name is Chloe and I'm gonna serve God for life. My name's Alexander Meza and I'll serve God for life. Come on now, let's give the Lord another hand of praise. Come on now, that's good enough for me, but let's give it up for Jesus. I'm talking about the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the one who saved you and delivered you and set you free. Man, God is so good. Well, my name is Levi. I'm from the city of Paso Robles. I'm 29 years old, and I'm a product of the Victory Home. Where's my Victory Home at? Come on, where's my homegrown brothers and sisters at? That's right, and I'm also alumni of the Third Wave Leadership Campus, and right now I find myself as a base team member right there in Third Wave Hollywood. And God is doing something right there on Hollywood Boulevard. But also, I find myself as a staff in the West Coast Urban Training Center. Come on now, where's my UTC at? And man, I'm just so excited because God is on the move, not only in Hollywood, but all around the world. We have training centers all around the world from Mexico to Brazil, to the East Coast in Chicago, to Amsterdam, to South Africa. And I know that God is raising up young people to be a part of this movement, the third wave movement, to fulfill the promise that God gave to us. Amen. And at this time, I'm going to let a few of my students share what God is doing in their lives. Amen. Hallelujah. Testing, come on. Where are all my gang members at? Come on, I don't mean gang gang members. I mean God's anointed now generation. Come on. Amen. If there's ever a time to be excited, it's, it's now. You know, man, once upon a time, I'm going to just share a, a brief testimony of my life. I was lost, man. I was afflicted. I was bound. And I was on a one-way road to hell. You know, but overall, man, God, he, he made a shift in my life. How many of us know the Bible says he uses the foolish things of the world to confound the wise? My name is Lewis, man. I grew up in the, in the city of Watts. California and overall man like I said my, my life was headed nowhere good and fast come on but God brought me into the into the men's home come on I'm a graduate of the men's home we're all my men's home graduates we're all the women's home graduates come on 
And right now, man, I'm honored and I'm blessed to say that I'm at the UTC West Coast where, man, God, come on, UTC West Coast, man. Hey, God is raising up an end time remnant. Come on, he's raising up a peculiar type of people. Come on, I was peculiar. I was, I was a weirdo, come on, according to the world standards. But today, man, I stand before you, a, a man of God. You know, and over there at the West Coast UTC, God is doing amazing things. He's exposing me to a whole new caliber of ministry. Come on, I ain't perfect. I stand before you, a man with many flaws, but my God covers them all. And today, I just want to encourage you. If you're from the ages of, thir- of 18 to 35, man, you go ahead and sign up. Man, God is training us up. If there's ever a time, man, it is now. Man, is there not a cause? We got people out there dying in these streets. And that's why overall, I give my life, man. Today, I don't know. I don't know nothing else but Jesus, man. I give my life to the ministry. And overall, I know that, man, our call is to to save, man, to snatch people out the hands of Satan. Man, today, if there's ever a time, man, I pray that you sign up and get equipped so that we could go ahead and just move forward with the plan of God. Come on, somebody. Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Good evening. I'm Lily. I'm 19, and I'm from the city of Manchester in England. I'm from across the pond, and I traveled thousands of miles to come to the West Coast Urban Training Center. And God is doing an amazing work there in the West Coast UTC. A bit about me, um, I came, I was raised in the ministry and uh, at a young age, I turned away from God. My mom went through a time of cancer and I got angry and I, I got hurt by God. And I turned away from him, I turned to this world, to partying, to drinking, to all that kind of stuff that all these young people do nowadays. But one day, God said to me that the obstacles I have placed in your journey are not to destruct you, but to prepare you for your destiny. And you know what my destiny is? It's to be set apart from this world. I am in this world, but I am not of this world. And God called me to the UTC thousands of miles away. I didn't know how I was going to do it. I didn't know how I was going to pay for it. I didn't have a job. I didn't have no money. I had minus uh, figures in my bank account. I was like, God, how am I going to do this? I've got minus 17 pounds, which is like minus seven, minus $20. I was like, how am I going to do it? But in three weeks, God provided for me, for the flight, for the tuition, for everything. And he provided even more. And he has been so, so faithful during this time. I've been able to serve at the base in Hollywood under our founders, Pastor Sonny and Sister Julie. We get to see the movement of God and we're really at the heart of this ministry. And I encourage you today that if if you have any feelings of you just want more, you just want more of God, if you want more of a relationship with God, if you've been stuck, if, if you have any feelings of hurt or if you've been depressed, just go and say yes to the Urban Training Center because he will do something so much more than you would ever imagine. And I just encourage you to just say yes. Say yes to God. Give him a bit of time. He's been waiting on all of you. Give him a bit of time. So I encourage you. We've got our booth right at the in the foyer. And just sign up. Just say yes. So, yeah, we thank you. Mexico, it's reaping time. In Africa, it's reaping time. In Latin America, it's reaping time. In the United States of America, it's reaping time. It is time for our ministry to reap a harvest. God likes to take a leader and say, okay, you got it here. You're good here. Are you ready to keep growing? Are you ready to keep changing? I got something new for you. I got something more for you. I'm ready to advance you. I'm ready to take the further. There's more to my plan that I have. Third wave. There's some women with God Amen. Let's give God some praise this evening. So as the can the usher it. So my name is Brother Samuel. I'm from Victory Outreach Pomona Gang. And I have the honor and privilege of doing 
our tithes and our offerings. So if the, the usher and the usheress can make their way forward. So if you need an envelope, a tithing envelope, please raise up your hand so they can give you an envelope this evening. We have multiple ways to give. You could give via online at viochino.com or text VO to uh, 45777. And also we have the baskets here in the front for you to give. So I'm, I'm going to read a quick, quick scripture. It's found in Deuteronomy 14, verse 22 to 23. It says, you must set aside a tithe of your crops, one-tenth of all the crops harvest each year. Bring this tithe to the designated place of worship, to the place your God chooses for his name to be honored. And eat it there in the presence. This applies to your tithes of grain, new wine, olive oil, the firstborn male of your flocks, the herd. Doing this will teach you always to fear the Lord your God. So my question for you this evening, what have you set aside tonight? Have you set aside a portion for some canes? Have you set aside a portion for some in and out? But are we setting aside something to give to God, right? Something that is holy, that it already belongs to God. So the word of God makes the purpose of tithing very clear. It teaches us to put God first. And it teaches us to fear the Lord. Because you and I are required to give God your best, your first and your best. Amen. It teaches us to, to do the things that we need to do in order to build the kingdom. So what we do with our money first, for example, is what we do, what, what, what we do with our money first, for example, it shows us what we value. Do you value your shoes? Do you value the Xbox 360? Do you, do you value... The PS5 or do you value United We Can? Because United We Can is about building the kingdom for Jesus, amen. And giving the first portion of your paychecks, young adults, leaders, and also giving your allowance or what has been given, been given to you, new gen and high schoolers. I didn't forget about you guys. And also to giving the part, focus our attention from ourselves and then it shows our attention to God. So if we give God our best then God is always going to provide for us, amen. And how many of us love United We Can? If you love United We Can, it means you love our ministry. And just our United We Can, of course, you just saw the UTC and also to the Third Way campus, campuses. Um, our United We Can unites with them to, to provide all the things that they need to help the different places in the cities that they're in. And also, too, I know the women of God, they're only one week away from their women Women's convention there at Guadalajara. Great things are taking place in Latin America. God is doing a great work in Panama. And there's also, you know, church building there in Costa Rica. Come on, let's give God some praise for that. We are a ministry that is about building, uh, planting churches all over the world. Also, to their, we were here for our end time rally, hearing from our very own pastor, Sonny, of all the great works that's taking place. We've seen the awesome testimonies of the, the finances that were reached from the people there in Brazil. That was so, it, it touched me so much. It says, I need to give more to God. I know I've, I've been giving, you know, at this level, but God prompted me to, to give much more, to go to greater heights in the area of my giving. And I want to encourage every single one of you guys, the new gen, the high schoolers, young adults, and the leaders to partner up with our ministry, partner up with heaven so we can reach the world for Jesus, amen. So at this time, I'm going to, with every head bowed and every eyes closed, I'm going to pray in for our tithes and our offerings. So Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to give unto you, Lord. And I just pray, God, in your hands, may it be full, multiply for the furtherance of the kingdom, Lord. And I pray, bless every single hand here, my God, and make let them make, go greater heights in the area of their giving, Lord. Bless their church, bless their ministry, God, and continue to do great works in their lives and through their lives, Lord. And we do it for your honor and we do it for your glory. And God's people say, amen. Bless you as you give this evening.
Hey, what's up, SGV East Region? God is doing something spo so special here in the city of Victory Outreach Chino tonight. And my name is Aaron Durrell. I'm from West Covina, California. And I am so excited for what's happening. How about you? What's up, guys? My name's Sonia. I'm also from the city of West Covina. Come on, we just have a couple announcements for you today. How many of the gang girls are going to the women's convention? Come on now, we're gonna be right there in Guadalajara. We're gonna visit family from all over the world. I wanna encourage you to get there. If you have your passport, there's still time. Amen, and another one is to continue to read your one year Bible. We're still reading, come on, we're only three months in. There's still time to jump in, so we wanna encourage you to read your one year Bible. And also, God is on the move there in the city of Hollywood. On April 13th and 14th, they're going to be having their grand opening. So we want to make sure that we back them up as the third wave of the SGV East region. And on Saturday, they're going to be having their banquet. And on Sunday, they're going to be having two special services. So you could even hit your morning service and right after that, get in the car and drive over there to the city of Hollywood. We want to make sure that we're representing our region there in the city of Hollywood. Yes, and another event that's happening in Hollywood is our Open Heaven two-day prayer. How many know we need prayer? It's okay. We're going to get there together, and we're going to pray it up because there's power in prayer. So I want you guys to get there. Let's mobilize all of our youth. We're going to roll deep right there at Victory Outreach Hollywood. And also on Sunday, April 28th, back here in the city of Chino, we're going to be having Pastor Mario Morello for our regional. And that's going to be the SGV East Regional. And I've seen God use Pastor Mario Morello in a powerful way. So if you're believing for a word, you're believing for a touch, then I want you to be here on April 28th at 6 p.m. because that's going to be a great time here in the city of Chino. Yes, and we also want to make sure you guys are staying up to date. You can follow us on our social media platforms. We have Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. We also have a new podcast right here at the Mama Church. So make sure you guys start subscribing, start sending yeah. stuff, because that's a great way to evangelize. And just turn your attention to the screen. Stay tuned for what's happening in Victory Outreach. and to kill and to destroy but I have come I am the good shepherd and I lay down my life for the sheep the thief If you can take your high school, then you can take your city. I feel this stirring taking place in my life. Something's beginning to change. It's something I can no longer resist. I can no longer fight. It's this purpose that chases after me. It's ready to ignite. I can't run. I can't hide. It's a sudden spark wanting to take flight. It's a God-given purpose that refuses to go to bed at night, but igniting, it comes from the top. Can't you hear it? The anointing, it calls us out by name. It's a sudden spark that demands a response to become a flame. There's a fire inside of us ready to ignite. Blood in the water 
Come on, SUVs, we just stand to your feet. Come on. Come on, if we don't praise them, the rocks will cry out. So if we have a reason to shout, if God has been good, somebody shout. Shout with the voice of triumph. Shout like you got the victory. Shout like you know that Jesus is in the house. Come on. Come on. My God, give it up for the worship team. What an awesome, awesome worship team we have. We are blessed with the best. How many are having a great time here this evening? You can already sense that God is here. He's been in here since we walked in through the doors of this building. And we know that God is just going to continue to move 
and we're going to allow him to do what he wants to do. So if you take hold of your, take hold of your Bibles at this time and turn to Luke chapter 2, we'll be starting there in verse 41. And just a real uh, quick correction in regards to one of the video announcements. We have our Ignite High School thing taking place here. It's going to be so awesome, two-day event. The actual dates are April 5th and 6th, um, and the week after will be the grand opening there for Third Wave Hollywood. We're so excited for the great things that are taking place in our movement. And so I want to thank God for what he's doing in my life and what's taking place here in our region. I'm grateful for our hosting pastor for hosting past pastor Jr. to Kim Argonzoni. Pastor's currently there preaching at a regional there in San Diego. It's great. We have Pastor Robert and Sister Veronica in the building, our regional pastors, all the way from P-Town, Pomona. It's so great to have them. We also have our gang girl regional sister Brittany right here. Come on, let's get over Sister Brittany. We have an awesome gang girl, multi-regional. And um, we are so excited. And also I got my beautiful wife Lex there in the second row. We've been married three years uh, this past week. And God has blessed me with a great, great, great wife. And it's also great. We have the UTC in the building. Third Wave Leadership Campus. The Pathways, they made it in the room. And we know that God is doing great things all over the world. Luke chapter 2, do you have it? And the Bible is like this. His parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he went... And he was 12 years old, and when they went up to Jerusalem, according to the custom of the feast, when they had finished the days as they returned, the boy Jesus lingered behind in Jerusalem. And Joseph and his mother did not know it, but supposing him to have been in the company, they went a day's journey, say a day's journey, and sought him among their relatives and acquaintances. So when they did not find, find him, they returned to Jerusalem seeking him. Now so that it was after three days they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the teachers, both listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard them were astonished in his understanding and answers. So when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said to him, son, why have you done this to us? Look, your, your father and I have sought, your, sought you anxiously. And he said to them, why do you, did you seek me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? Say, about my father's business. But they did not understand the statement which he had spoken to them. Then they went down with them to Nazareth, and he was subject. And some versions say he was obedient to them. But his mother kept all these things in her heart, and Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in the favor with God and men. The title of my message here this evening is About the Father's Business. Say, About the Father's Business. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you, Lord, for what you're doing here this evening. We sense you in the room. We know you're in the room. And I pray, Lord, that you will increase and I will decrease. And this word that you gave me specifically for your people here this evening will truly penetrate their hearts. Move. Move how only you can move, Lord. I pray, Lord, that we'll be a generation of action and that you will be not just a priority, but you'll be the priority in our lives, Father. So I thank you in advance for the great things you're going to continue to do here this evening and in our movement. We give you all the praise, all the glory. We all say? You may be seated. Now, we're hearing a lot of phrases. Some of them are older. Some of them, they're brand new. And you've, some of you may have heard about being about the business. How many have heard of that? Uh, he or she is about the business. Or I'm about to show them the business. Come on. Or there's those that say, well, I'm standing on business. How many have heard of that? I'm standing on business, right? You know what's so amazing about some of the people that say about they're standing on business, they're they barely got a job. My God. So look. So standing, at, standing on business, you, barely, you don't even pay your tithe. No. <laughs> and, here, and here's the thing is I want to make sure that you're understanding what I'm going to say here this evening is that God does want to bless his people. And I believe that we're in a season where God is blessing us as the gang and as Victory Outreach and as the third wave. We are seeing God move in an accelerated pace. And we are seeing people getting blessed and God is raising them up and using them to do great exploits. We are raising dispossessors that are going to go and take nations. Anybody here that's even, you know, I, I'm called to take a nation. I'm called to take a city. That, that I love the city that I'm in, but I may not be here very long because I'm getting trained and equipped and prepared to do what God has called me to do. And there's also those that you may not be called to go, but you're called to send. Let me say this, that even if you're called to stay, you're still called to send. <laughs> because we have a world to reach. We are not a local church. We are a global church. We are a global movement. 
Now, no matter what season you find yourself in or the situation there back at home, you are part of a worldwide movement. You are part of something bigger than yourself. You see, we're living in a time where many people say that they want to change the world. Let me say that. I want to change the world. Well, if you're part of Victory Outreach, if you're part of the God's Anointed Now generation, if you're a part of the third wave, if you're part of the SGV East region, I'm here to declare to you this evening that you can and you will change the world. No, you're not convincing me here. I'm not that type of preacher to get quiet on. I'm here to let you know that we can change the world. God has called you and I to go. Say go. We are called to go and take this world. It's not going to be given to us. We got to take it. There's an old song we used to sing here in Victory Alley Town. We're going to go into the enemy's camp and take back what he has stolen from us. We're going to take back the cities. We're going to take back the nations. You, 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 you may be in a, in a small church right now, but, but just because you're in a, a small city, a small church, a, a small gang, doesn't mean you need to have a small mentality because we are going mega. Say mega. We are going mega. We're going to greater heights. We're, we're going to new heights. We are in a season. We are going to experience things we've never seen done before. But we need some people here tonight that will make the decision and say, I'm going to be a part. I'm going to be a part about the Father's business. See, many times people put their own business before the Father's. Can I preach here? Can I, can I shame the devil? There's, there's some people that they're so concerned about themselves being famous and to be recognized and to be heard and to be seen. But what is the motive behind it? Is it for self-ambition or self-recognition? Because I've said it many times, and maybe I'm going to say it for the people in the back, that there's people that they want to be superstars, but God doesn't need superstars. He needs servants. He needs servants. If we are going to be the generation that God has called us to be, we need to be a generation that knows how to serve, that knows how to put their hands to the plow, that knows how to meet the needs of people, that are willing to do whatever is necessary to see people come to know Christ. See, we got to be about the Father's business. There's some people that they're so concerned with things that have no eternal significance. Things that really have no eternal value. But when you have the right mentality and you have a kingdom mentality, then you're going to make the shift from, to being a part of the Father's business. Somebody say the Father's business right there where you're at. See, we need to do an honest self-evaluation. Are we consumed with ourselves? Are we consumed with making ourselves famous? Or are we going to live the lives that give glory to God? Are, we gonna, are people going to see Christ inside of us? See, going back to our text, we see Jesus at the age of 12 years old with Mary and Joseph. And every year they would go to celebrate the Passover in Jerusalem. See, the Passover was a time of remembrance of how God delivered his people from the hand of Pharaoh. Slavery there in Egypt. Right? Many of us know the story. We're getting ready to, to, to celebrate Easter and all these great things that are happening. You know, but we, we recognize the Passover and what God has done, what Jesus did on that cross. But... See, the Passover was that when the angel of death was going to come by, that the Jews were, gi they were giving instructions, the, the God's people were giving instructions to, to, to get the blood of the lamb across the doorpost. And that when the angel of death came by, it would pass over and spare their firstborn. And so every year the Jews would commemorate that. Little did they know that this young boy Jesus was going to be the ultimate sacrifice. The lamb of God, his blood. Let's never forget the power of the cross. What Jesus did on that cross for you and I, dying for us, so we can have an opportunity to live. There's some people here in this building that you should have been dead. Can I preach here? I should have been dead. We should have been dead. But Jesus came in into our situation. He came into our circumstance. And, and, he, and he cleaned us up. And he turned our lives around. And he, and he put us in a ministry like Victory Outreach. Well, we're not just saved, we're not just cleaned up, but we're able to be used for the work of the ministry. That's a reason to give the Lord a hand here this evening. <laughs> See, in this passage, it, it probably was not that difficult to lose track of Jesus with such a large group of travelers. So we shouldn't accuse Joseph and Mary of child neglect because of the crowd of people. But sometimes you and I can be 
walking and we can be traveling through life and not, and not even realize, and realize that Jesus is not even with us. There's some people that they're very good at serving God without serving him. They get so used to the routines. They get so used to the religious calisthenics. They, 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 they get so used to knowing when to shout or knowing when to jump. But, but in their own personal life, they're, 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 God's not in them. And so because of that, they're not getting changed. It, it's an inside-out job. See, those that are really allowing God to be God in their life, he works in the inner works. See, some people want to do the big things, but they're not, they don't allow God to do the little things in their life and their heart to cleanse them, to change them, to, to, to get rid of those things that are keeping them back from being who he's called them to be. But we need to come to a place in our lives where we're saying, God, I don't want to follow the crowd. I want to follow you. See, we're living in a time where many people are following the crowd. They're following the trends. They're following the things that look good and sound good. They're listening to things that they shouldn't be listening to. They're watching things they shouldn't be listening, uh, shouldn't be watching, but, but they're, because they're following the trend. But we're in this world, but we're not of this world. What does that mean? That, that even though we're here, we shouldn't smell like the world. We shouldn't talk like the world. We shouldn't act like the world. That when people see us, they should see that there's something different about us. See, we shouldn't be the type of people that when people find out we're, that we're Christians, that they're surprised. When, when people there at your job, where you work, in your school, when they find out you're a Christian, they should not be amazed. <laughs> they should be able to say, you know what, I, I, I've noticed there was something different about you. I noticed that you've always had a smile. I've noticed that you've always had joy about you. I, I, I've noticed that you don't get involved in these Ugly conversation that we get involved in. I recognize something different about us. See, don't get into a place in your life where you're traveling and you're serving God without really serving him. See, Jesus said, I must be about my father's business. See, in, during this time, it was nothing more natural than the son to take up his father's business. See, Jesus did follow Joseph's footsteps and be, as a carpenter. But his words here show that he was uh, at least beginning to understand his unique relationship with his real father. See, we got to make the decision here tonight. Are we really going to be about the father's business? Now, how do we do that here this evening? One, we got to know the father. Say, know the father. See, do we really want to know about the father? There's many people that know about him, but don't know him in an intimate way. Like there's people in our generation that they say they know their favorite celebrity because they follow them on follow them on Instagram. <laughs> Some people you follow Drake <laughs> and you think you know Drake, <laughs> but you only see what he posts. <laughs> you don't really know him. <laughs> see, some people that's how their relationship is with God. They think they know him, but they don't really know him. Know him. See, we need to make the decision to say, God, I really want to know you. I don't want to just know about you. But I want to know you for myself. I want to have an intimate, deep, sincere relationship with you. I don't want you to be the type of father where I only come to you when I need something. I don't want, I don't want you to be the only type of God that when I, when, I, when I find myself in a situation that I put myself in, okay, God, get me out of this one and I promise I'll serve you the rest of my life, right? But no, 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 it's God, I, I, I want to know you. I, I long to know you. I, I long to be in your presence. See, the, 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 the real test to see how, some, how people really know their father is how they react when they go through trials. Ooh. Trials, storms, situations, circumstances. When all hell breaks loose, that's when you know when somebody has a deep relationship with God. Because when somebody knows their God, when they know their father, they know that their father is a good father. They know that their father has their best interest in mind. They know that you know, whatever they're going through, it's not meant to destroy them, but to build their faith. So saying, God, I, I may not understand. I, I may not recognize why I'm going through what I'm going through. I may not understand why I, I'm facing these same situations and circumstances. But what I do know is that you are good. You are powerful. You are all sufficient. If you are for me, who can be against me? That no weapon formed against me shall prosper. So that I'm going to smile through the storm. I'm going to smile. I'm going to know that you are God. I'm going to declare your goodness in the good times, in the challenging times. Because you are that good father. You are the father to the fatherless. 
Come on, somebody shout right there where you're at. You, you, you may come from a background where you, don't, you, you didn't have the best example of a father. Your father may have not been in your life. Or your bi biological father may have not been an example of what it is to be a man of God. But I'm here to let you know that you have a father in heaven that loves you. He loves you and he has a plan and purpose for your life. And so we, if we are going to be the God's anointed now generation, then we got to know who is the God that we serve. My God is big. My God is powerful. My God is more than able. My God is all powerful. He is all knowing and he's here right now. He's omnipresent and we want to raise up a generation that says, God, I long to know you. Come on. See, when you know God, you will not get easily distracted or deterred. See, it, it's so amazing how people in our generation, when they really wanted something in the world, they weren't going to let anything stop them. But now when it comes to doing the right things and being who God has called you to be, how easily we can get distracted or deterred. We say, God, I, I'm with you and I give you my life. If you gave your life over to Jesus, if you gave your life over to God, don't take it back. It's, it's that, that should not even be an option. See, there's some people that say, oh, pastor, I'm with you till the wheels fall off. And then once there's a nail in the tire, you're gone. But it's saying, no, God, I long to know you. I know you're with me. And I know you're covering me. And I know that you are going to see me through. Come on, the Bible reads there in Romans chapter 8, verse 28. That, and we know that all things, say all things, work together for the good for those that love God. Is there anyone here in this building that loves God? And those that are called according to his purpose. See, all things will work together for the good. So don't wear it. How many know somebody that when they're going through it, you can see it? That they wear it. You're like, oh, my God, I don't know who I'm talking to right now. There's some people that they got their, bi they got their, bi they got their real name, but some of them they go by the name of Smiley. One day they're Smiley. The next day they're Sadness, right? <laughs> They go by their emojis, right, by their emotions. You're like, who am I talking to right now? But when somebody has a deep relationship with God, they don't wear it. There's some people you haven't smiled in a long time. Get that smile back. It's okay if it's crooked. God loves crooked smiles. You may feel like J. Cole. It's all good. God loves crooked smiles. We, we got to learn to, to not allow the seasons and the storms to dictate how we look at God. We got to be able to stand firm in knowing that God is God. See, I heard it said by a leader that the more you're going through it, the better you should look. <laughs> that means that the more you're going through it, like, man, I'm really going through it right now. Okay, I'm going to get a haircut. I'm going to look good. <laughs> Some of the sisters, man, sisters, man, I'm, I'm, I'm going through it. I don't, I don't even feel like dressing up. I feel like wearing sweatpants, but I'm going to put that makeup on. I'm going to look, I'm not going to let anybody know I'm going through it. Because here's the thing, is that the, the enemy can try to do a lot of things. One thing the enemy can't do is read your mind. The enemy cannot read your mind. He can't. So imagine what it does to the enemy when we're going through it and, he, and he's throwing his firing darts and he's throwing things to try to distract us and divert us. But we're still smiling. Or we're still clapping. And we're still shouting. And we're still declaring who God is. Imagine what it does to the enemy. And so as a generation, we still need to shout. Some people need to get their shout back. You need to get your praise back. You need to get your worship back. And say, devil, you are not going to have me. I know that God is with me. And I know he's going to see me through. So I'm going to praise. I'm going to worship. I'm going to shout. I'm going to glorify the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We got to know the Father. Because we know he's in control. Secondly, we, we know when we're about the Father's business, we know that we allow the Father's desires to become our desires. The Bible reads there in Psalm chapter 37 verse 4. It says, take delight in the Lord. Take delight in the Lord and he will give you your heart's desires. So there's many people that they pray like, oh, God knows my heart. God knows the desires of my heart. right? But are your desires God's desires? See, some people, like, they, they, they believe in some weird type of, they want to name it and claim it. Like, there's some girls, they want to claim that guy, but there's already three other girls that claim that same guy. Did God talk to all of them? Can a brother keep it real? Like, I'm young, but I've been, I've been doing this for a long time. <laughs> it's when you take delight in the Lord. It's when you delight yourself in God's presence. 
then he will reveal to you who he is. And then he'll start changing your mind. See, sometimes we pray and we ask God to change his. But it needs to be, no, God, change my mind. Change my thinking. Come on, how many, how many came in to the church and sometimes your, your thinking was way off? You were saying some way out outlandish things. You were like, my God, what's coming out of this brother, this sister, right? But then as we came in, God cleaned us up. And he changed us and he renewed our mind. And, he, and, and now, we, now we think more clear. Now we, now we see clear. Now we have a, a better understanding of who God is and what he has called us to do. See, there's so many people that don't know what God has called them to do. And they've been in the church for many, many years. And because of that, they're wandering in circles. They're wandering in circles and people are passing them by. See, we need to take delight in God's presence and say, God, work in me. Work in me. You're, you're the potter and I'm the clay. So, so mold me and shape me and, and do what you need to do and, and say what you need to say so that I can, uh, I can be who you've called me to be. See, when you spend time with God, that's when you get clear direction for our lives. See, it's when we get that clear direction that we'll start making the steps towards being who he's called us to be. See, it's when we delight ourselves in God's presence where we'll feel that call to go to the UTC. Oh, can you see, that was a great place to shout right there where you're at. It's when you take delight in God's presence where now you'll feel the earth like, man, God, I, I, I know I'm called to go, so let me get pr uh, prepared and trained and equipped, so let me go to the Third Wave Leadership Campus. Or, or you know, you know God, you're, you're doing something new, you're doing something fresh in my life, but, but, but I'm living in a household where, where no one else is saved, so I need to go to the discipleship home. I need to go to, to the leadership hub. I, I need to start taking some steps to being who God has called me to be. Or I'm called to be a preacher in my generation. Well, well God, I, I, I want to know you. I'm going to grow in my doctrine. So I'm going to get enrolled in VOBC. Come on, when you, when you deny yourself in God's presence, then you'll start taking those steps. See, when you submit yourself over to God's will, that's when you discover who you're called to be. See, many people, they love the part about Jesus being Savior, but they don't like the part of him being Lord. Meaning he has complete control. Meaning he has full dominion. Are you at a place in your life, in your walk, where, you, where God has given access to interrupt your plans? Let me say that again. Are we in a place in our walk, in our Christian walk, where we can allow God, give him access to interrupt our plans? See, some of us have great plans, our plans, but they're not God's plans. And when you're, when you're doing things outside of God's will, you're not going to be fulfilled. You're not going to be fulfilled. You can make all the money in the world, but if you're outside of God's will, you're still going to be hurting. You're still going to be depressed. You're still going to fill a void. There's some people here that you know you, sh you know you should be doing. And God has already shown you. But for whatever reason, something has stopped you from stepping in it. Well, don't, don't let this be this time because Jesus is coming back soon. Come on. Jesus is coming back soon. But we want to maximize the time that God has given us. We want to give God our best years. See, there's some people that say, you know, God, I'll, I'll serve you when I get older. I'll serve you after I've, I've had all my fun and I've done all the things I've wanted to do. And then I'll, then I'll give my life over to you. But no, we want to be a people that give God our best years. We have our strength and we have our energy and we have that fire, the fire that, 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 that consumes anything around them. See, we got to make the decision. Are we going to be a fire igniter or a fire extinguisher? Because there's some people that you're real good at extinguishing fires. You're, very, you're, you're an expert. You used to be a fireman. Because when somebody's on fire, you want to extinguish that fire. You want to quench that fire. The reason being is because they're doing something you're not willing to do. But when you're a fire igniter, that means, you know what, I'm going to be on fire. Then that means because I'm on fire, everyone around me is going to be on fire. That means my city's going to be on fire. My church is going to be on fire. When my pastor sees me, he's going to get on fire. We got to fan the flame. Say fan the flame. We got to fan the flame in our lives. Fan that thing right there. Fan your neighbor. Fan your neighbor right there. Yeah. We got to fan the flame. We got to say, God, I'm in your presence. I'm delighting myself in your presence. Now speak to me. Speak for your servant is listening. I want to be on fire for you. I want the world to see me burn. Come on. Say about the Father's business. We got to be about the Father's business. We got to allow his desires to be our desires. 
thoroughly, and I'm almost done. I pray again something here this evening. Is thoroughly, in order to be about the Father's business, we need to have a reverence for the Father's house. In Matthew chapter 21, verse 12 through 14, very familiar passage, it says, Then Jesus went into the temple of God and drove out all those who bought and sold in the temple and overturned the tables, my God, of the money changers in the seats of those who sold doves. And he said to them, It is written, My house should be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. Then the blind and the lame came to him in the temple and he healed them. You see, when you have a kingdom mentality, we don't allow our personal business to consume us over doing what God has called us to do. See, what, what, what do you see when you walk into your church? What, what, do you, what do you see when you walk into the Father's house? See, God has called our house, his house, to be a house of worship. That means that whenever you come together, the worship should be taking place. There should be a worship that, that God, the, the type of worship that gets the attention. See, there's some people that you've gotten to a place where you're too cool. You're too cool. You, you, you've gotten so consumed with what other people think. But in the world, some of you didn't care what, what other people thought. Some of you are wild in the world. Some of you are doing some crazy things in the world. I don't some of you are doing some crazy things on that dance floor. My God. We made a fool out of ourselves in the world, but sometimes when we get to the church, we want to get, we're too dignified now. And that's just for the UTC students that just came back. That's just for the victory home. No, don't they know that I'm a leader now? Don't they know that I'm a pastor now? Let that be for, for, the, for the new people. I, 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 I'm too mature now to worship and lift up my hands. I'm too, I'm too big now to jump and to shout. Right? Am I preaching to anybody here? Don't look at them if they're here. But it's a type of worship where it says, God, I don't care how I look. Because I'm worshiping to, as, to you, giving you glory as the audience of one. It should be a house of worship. It also should be a house of prayer. That, that, that's why we're having open heaven. Right? That's why, that's why the team, there were even a national team, Pastor Ryan and the team, we said, you know what? We, we're, we, we need to raise up a generation of intercessors. So Pastor Rocky's back. We, we, yes, we, we, have, we have a third way that's talented and gifted and great preachers and they're fire. But we need to raise up a generation that knows how to get a hold of God. That knows how to pray. The type of prayer that gets the attention. The, the, the type of prayer that, that moves his hands. We got to know how to pray. Here's the thing. Is that if you don't pray, you'll become prey. Let me read that again. Some people are like, you, you guys didn't go to school that way. Look, if you, if you, if you don't pray, P-R-A-Y, you become prey, P-R-E-Y. You'll become prey to the enemy. If the enemy could do anything, he's going to try to stop you from praying. That's why it gets, so, it gets hard to wake up in the morning. Come on, say, brother, keep it real. Sometimes it gets hard. It gets hard after a long week to get up early in the morning and pray. And there's some people that you pray just because you have to, not because you want to. There's some people there, don't look at me, there's some UT students, sometimes you pray and you're like, man, I'm just doing time right now. <laughs> some people in the discipleship home, you're like, my God, is it, is it almost an hour yet? It's like, why, why is it every time when it's, when it's time to pray, we always see you in the restroom, my God. <laughs> like if we were to say, man, tomorrow we're going to go and we're going to go to Six Flags, man, we, we would make it happen, everybody will be here. But if we call a prayer morning tomorrow, tomorrow morning at 5 a.m., how many of you would be here? <laughs> what are you saying? You know, God, I, I don't want to be pray. I, I want to be strong in you. I want to tap into your presence so I can be you've called me to be. I, I want to know you and I want to have a reverence for your house. Also, a house of outreach. Say outreach. outreach. Also, a house of miracles. I'm, believe, I'm believing without a shadow of a doubt, and our founder's been preaching about it, that we are in miracle territory. Miracles, signs, and wonders. Things that have never been done before. And I believe that they're going to happen there in our gang nights, third wave nights. And when you come together. But we need some people that are miracle workers. That will step out by faith. And saying, God, if you said it could be done, I'm going to trust you at your word. Some people here, you need to lay some, lay some hands on the sick and the hurting and the depressed and the oppressed. Lay hands on people and say, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. Be who you're called to be. Our gang, our church is to be a house of miracles. 
I'm almost done here tonight because I believe God went through something special here at this altar. In order to be about the Father's business, first we got to know Him. We got to allow His desires to be our desires. We got to have a reverence for the Father's house. And fourthly, we got to show people the Father. We got to show people the Father. Pastor Saul preached a powerful message there at Mighty Men of Valor, one of the leadership sessions. And it's a message that changed my life. And he spoke on this passage, John chapter 14, verse 6. It says, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known that my, my Father also. And from now on, you know him as you have seen me. And, and Peter said to him, Lord, show us the Father. And it is sufficient to us. And Jesus said to him, I have been with you so long. And yet you have not known me, Philip, who has seen me and has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am the Father and the Father is in me? And the words say, I speak to you, I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but my Father who dwells in me does the works. Believe in me that I am the Father and the Father is in me, and who else is in me for the sake of the works of themselves. Most assuredly I say to you that he who believes in me and the works that I will do, will do greater works. Say greater works. And these things he will do because I go with my Father. See, we need to make the decision to say, you know, I'm going to show people the Father. There's some people, like I said, they're real good at showing themselves, but they don't show the Father. And sometimes we see it there on your social media. There's some people, they post about everything except Jesus. <laughs> they post about the shoes they're wearing. They post about the nice places they're going. They post about their vacations. They post about their fresh kicks, their fresh drip. <laughs> but, they, but they don't post about Jesus. <laughs> And it's, it's, oh, it's just social media. But here's the thing, is that whatever you post, you value, the bottom line. But let's go even a step, a step further. If we looked at your bank statement, your checking account, what would we see? See, how you send your, spend your finances is an indication of what you value. See, don't tell me that you love Victory Outreach. Don't tell me you love the vision if you're not part of United We Can. Don't tell me that. And you may say, man, it's strong. No, it, it's, it's the truth. <laughs> you value where you put your money. There's some people that you look real good. <laughs> you look really, really good, but you're always broke. Why is that? It's because you have the wrong values and principles in your life. But when you have that right mentality, you say, you know what, I, it's a delight for me to give to the house of God. It's a delight to give to you to United We Can. Why? Because we're seeing lives change every day. That's why we do what we do. Our founders and, and, and our elders and our leaders, we, we just don't plant churches just to plant churches. We do it because we want to show people the Father. That's why we're in Amsterdam. That's why we're in South Africa. That's why we're in Brazil. That's why we're in Guadalajara. That's why we're in Hollywood. That's why we're going to Costa Rica. That's why we're in the SUV East region. Because we want to show people the Father. Because we recognize and we acknowledge that Jesus is coming soon. But until he does, but until he does, we are going to put our hands to the plow. And we're going to make the dedication. And we're going to make the commitment to saying, God, I'm going to show you everywhere that I go. That when people see me, they're going to see you. Because I recognize that you are, you are who you are. We got to show people the Father. We got to show people the Father. It's our time, gang. It's our time, third wave. Are you ready? Are you ready to make that commitment to say, I am going to be a part of the Father's business, that I'm going to make the decision to show people the Father in Chino, in West Covina, in Pomona, in Ontario, in Corona, in Temecula. If that's you, stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. If that's you, if you say, I'm going to show people the Father, or if you want to praise, you want to worship with us, come to the altar. Come to the altar right now. Come on. We are, we are about the Father's business, and we are stepping in miracle territory. Come on. I got to praise. I got to praise, and I got to let it out. I got to praise.
bones. There's a fire and it shut up in my bones. There's a fire and it shut up in my bones. There's revival. There's revival in the church. Revival in the church. Revival in the church. Sing, there's a fire. There's a fire. There's revival in the church tonight. There's revival in the church tonight. There's revival in the church tonight. There's revival. There's revival in the church. Revival in the church. Revival in the church tonight. I got the Holy Ghost upon me right now. I've got the Holy Ghost. I've got the Holy Ghost upon me right now. I've got the Holy Ghost upon me right now. I've got the Holy Ghost upon me right now. I've got the whole, I've got the Holy Ghost upon me. The Holy Ghost upon me. Yeah, yeah. The Holy Ghost upon me right now. Oh, do it. I've got the Holy Ghost upon me. I've got the Holy Ghost upon me. I've got the Holy Ghost upon me. I've got the Holy Ghost upon me right now. I've got the Holy Holy Ghost upon me. The Holy Ghost upon me. Yeah, the Holy Ghost upon me right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We came to bless you, Lord. Yeah. Can somebody give him a shout of praise in the room, man? Yeah. When I think of the Lord and what he's done for me, when I think of his goodness and how he makes me want to run, 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 all day, all day. Yeah, yeah. Run, 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 all day. All night. When I think of the Lord and what He's done for me, when I think of His goodness and how He's set me, it makes me dance, 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 dance all day, all night. It makes me dance, 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 dance all day, all night. When I think of the Lord and what He's done for me, when I think of His goodness and how He set me, makes me want to spin, makes me spin. Spin, spin, all day, all night. It makes me spin, 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 all day, all night. Come on. There is revival in the gang tonight. And there's some people here that you maybe you're watching and you're and you're checking it out, but but it's time to to break loose. It, it's time to say, God, I, I I know you, and because I know you, I want everybody to know about you. So somebody shout, continue to worship, continue to praise. Come on, it's not ordinary night. Come on, come on, come on. When I think of the Lord. When I think of the Lord and what He's done for me, when I think of His goodness, and if you want to shout, 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 all day, all night, it makes me shout, 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 all day, all night, all day, all day, all night, all day, all night. Do I, do I get any city takers in the building? Any city takers? This is my brother Octavio. He's getting ready to go to the Third Wave Leadership Campus. And God has called him to take his city all the way from West Anaheim. Share what God's doing in your life. I'm just thankful that God has called me and he placed me in the victory home. I went from not enough at a church to being in the home to going from winning retreat to Boston to San Antonio and now the leadership campus. And I'm just excited for everything that he's going to do. Come on, come on, come on. There's revival in the church today. There's revival in the church today. There's revival in the church. There's revival in the church. There's revival in the church today. There's revival in the church. There's revival in the church. There's revival in the church today. There's revival in the church. There's revival in the church. There's revival in the church today. Church, revival in the church, revival in the church, revival in the church today. Where's little Robert? Robert Garcia, little Robert, where you at? 
Where you at? Little Robert, make your way. I know you're here. I've seen you. Little Robert Garcia, he's here somewhere. No, Little Robert. Robert Garcia, Pomona. Pomona, where's he at? He's here. I've seen him. He's right here. Come on. No, he's here. He's here. We'll wait. Come on. He's here. <laughs> Little Robert, come on. Come on. Little Robert, make your way. Where's he at? Where's he at? He's here. He's here. I've seen him. He's here. Little Robert, come on. Where's he at? Little Robert, make your way. We have this driver from West Covina right now. We're getting a little rock. Hallelujah! Is there a grateful people tonight? Hallelujah! God has been so faithful to me. I'm from the city of West Covina. I'm 19 years old. And God has called me to be able to reach for what God has for my life. There's been an anointing. I'm a church kid. All I've known is the ministry. Yet I've decided to pursue it with the rest of my life, with the rest of my heart, knowing that there is nothing out the world that is better than what God has for each and every one of us. Hey, it's the SGV East region in the house. Hey, hey, how many know there was a revival in this church tonight, all right? Hey, can we see that again? Ready? There's a revival in the church tonight. There's a revival in the church tonight. There's revival. There's revival in the church tonight. There's revival. There's revival in the church tonight. There's revival. There's revival in the church. Revival in the church. Revival in the church. I got the Holy. I got the Holy Ghost upon me right now. I got the Holy Ghost. Ghost upon me right now. Yeah, I got the Holy Ghost. I got the Holy Ghost. Yeah, I got the Holy Ghost. I've got the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost upon me. 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 The Holy Ghost We are the next anointed one who's ready to prepare, who plant souls in the young generations, who's ready to take a city, who's ready, come on, to travel all around the world, claiming the name of Jesus. Come on, let's give it up. Woo! Come on, somebody shout. Shout like you know that something's happening right now in Chino, California. Shout, shout so those online can feel and know that there is a third way. Oh God, come on, woo! Lift up your hands, lift up your hands, lift up your hands, lift up your hands, right there we are. Lift up your hands. It's time to show people the Father. We gotta make the declaration to say, I'm going to speak Jesus everywhere that I go. Jesus in my city, in my family, in my world. Come on, lift up your hands. Come on.
in the name of Jesus over your family, over your city tonight. Oh, Jesus. Come on. Talk to Jesus right here you have. Come on. Cry out to him. Saying, Father, I want to be about your business. I want to know you. I want to allow your desires to become my desires. I want to have a reverence for your house. And I want to show you everywhere that I go. Come on. Come on. If you can't do it now, you won't do it later. Right there where you're at. Come on. You're believing for a revival, a breakthrough. Take place there in your city. Come on, cry out. Cry out to the one that changes everything. Come on, come on, come on. moments. God's doing something so special here right now. He's sensing. He's here. If you need a miracle, lift up your hand. Say, I need a miracle. Like, I need a physical miracle. Something that I can't do on my own ability. Something that can't be done in the natural. If that's you, lift up your hands. If that's you, come to the center of the altar. If you're desperate, if you're not desperate, stay where you are. But if you say, you know what, I, I need something to change. Whether it's for you or you want to stand in proxy for somebody in a mir for a miracle. Come on, come. Come boldly. Come boldly. Lift up your hands. We're going to sing that song, More Than Able. See, God is more than able. He's more than able to do it. We just need some people that are full of faith to believe he can. And not just believe but expect. See, sometimes without even knowing it, we deny what he can do. But, but, but not this generation. We're going to be faithful, not faithless. So lift up your hands. Oh God, you are more than able.
to deny what the Lord can do. happening all over right now there's some people that you came in with some heavy oppression you, you you've allowed the worries of this world to dictate how you look at God but I've heard it said that you can't be grateful and depressed at the same time just remember how good God has been in your life his goodness it's, it's running after you you may not be where you want to be, but thank God you're not who you used to be. So already declare, he's, he's been so good, he did not want you just to die where you're at. He's going to see you through. Some people here, you, you had some physical limitations that have kept you from worshiping the way you want to worship. Already envision yourself changing around. Envision your, 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 your full health. And, and envision that, that when you go back to the doctor, you get that clean bill of health. Already thank him in advance for what he's doing right now. You're going to go home to the, the doctor. You're going to go to the doctor, and you're not going to need those pills anymore. You're not going to need those things anymore because you're healed right now. Come on. The healer, the deliverer is in the building right now. Come on. Ooh, some people here, you, you, the... the, the what you really need is a good night's sleep. Some of you are going to sleep like a baby here tonight. You're going to sleep with a peace, a peace of stress, all understanding. Some people here, you've been stressed. You've been stressed. You, 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 you've you been worrying about, God, how are you going to do this? You're going through some financial situation. Well, be still and know that God is God. As long as you continue to put your trust in Him, be faithful to what He's given you. And He's going to see you through. Come on. Miracles are in motion right now. I called up this young man, Robert, right now. He's not going to testify right now, but I called him up because God has great things in store for him. And I'm, I'm very careful when I step out like this. I want to make sure it's, it's him. And, Robert, I want you to look around right now. What you're seeing is a glimpse of how you are going to operate one day. I truly believe it. And it's not because of who your parents are. God, God has given you a special anointing, but with that anointing, going to come a heavy price. You're not going to be able to be like the rest of your kids your age. You're going to stand out. No matter how hard you may try to fit in, you're not going to be able to. And so you're going to make the decision to say, God, you know what? 
I know you, and I know you've been good, and, you're, and you, God has been good to your family, and you got to say, you know what, God, I'm going to show you everywhere that I go. You're young, but God is going to give you wisdom beyond your years. God is going to use you in a mighty way there in Pomona, and you're not just going to be a local guy. You're going to impact the world. I truly believe that. I truly believe that. I truly, without a shadow of a doubt, I can say that. Lift your hands right there where you're at. Both of them. Put your hands forward. Father God, I thank you for this young man. I thank you, Lord, for the great things that you're going to use him to do. Father, I thank you, Lord, for the heart that he has to please you. And I pray, Lord, that you will use him to do great things, awesome things. I pray, Lord, that when he feels that tugging in his heart to show who you are, that he'll be obedient. Even though at times it's not going to be convenient, at times it's going to be very difficult, very challenging. At times it's going to cause him to step out of himself. But when he steps out, you're going to step in. And when, he, when you step in, the sky's the limit of what you're going to do in and through his life. So I pray, Lord, you'll use him in a mighty way. I pray, Lord, that you will use him as a mighty young man after your own heart. You can do great things, awesome things, mighty things. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Can you lift up your hands? A few more moments. Can you lift up your hands? Come on. Come on. Pastor Paul's daughter, God's going to use you to do awesome things. I didn't tell you this at the UTC when I just spoke there. I see you preaching in front of thousands of people, the multitudes. But God's going to give you that heart to go after the one. There's going to be times you're going to have to leave the 99 to go after that one. You may know what that one is. You got to be obedient to that voice. When you're faithful with little, God will put you over many which leads to much, which leads to mega. I see it. You're going you're gonna to operate in the supernatural. You're going to lay hands on young girls, young girls that are like the impossible cases, the young girls that like people thought there's no way this person could be changed. You're going to lay hands on them, and God's going to use you. Put your hands. Put your hands forward. Lift up your hands. Where's Lexa? Alina, get behind her right now. Alina, get behind her. Alina, get behind her. In the name of Jesus, use her in a mighty way. Use her, Lord, to make an impact. Not just in Manchester, not just in England, not just Europe, but the world. Use her, Father. Honor the sacrifice that she's made to, to enlist in the UTC. Let her get everything you have in store for her life. Prepare her and equip her for the great things that you're going to use her to do. Use her, Lord, to be a voice in this generation. I pray, Lord, that she walks in obedience, that you will give her the words to speak. And I pray, Lord, that she'll be faithful in whatever field you put her in. And as she's faithful in that, you'll continue to trust her with more and more and more. Great things, awesome things. Get her, give her a sensitivity. Give her compassion. Give her empathy for the lost, for the hurting, for the broken. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Use her to do great things, awesome things. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lift up your hands. Oh, you're so good, Father. You're so awesome. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Like you said, we're seeing miracles take place. But the greatest miracle is the miracle of salvation. Some people hear that. Maybe you, you go to church, but you're not really saved. You don't know the Father. Maybe you just know about Him, but you don't know Him. Well, tonight's your night. Tonight is your night to say, God, I really want to know you. Maybe at one time you were serving Him for whatever reason you fell off track. Well, it's time to get back on track. It's time to dust yourself off. It's time to get realigned with what God has in store for your life. Lord, I say, you've never made that decision, well, tonight's your night as well. So on the head's bowed, your eyes closed. On the count of three, I want you to lift up your hands. And if you're serious and you mean business, saying, God, I really want to know you. I want to, I want to surrender. I'm ready to surrender. My will for your will. On the count of three, lift up your hands. One, the best decision of your life. Two, my promise, you will not regret it. Three, if that's you, lift up your hands. Say, I want to give my life over to Jesus. See a few hands going awesome. Many hands going up. Awesome. So awesome. I want you to repeat this prayer after me. If you're not saying it to me, it's between you and God. Say, dear Jesus, 
I know that I'm a sinner. But I also know that you died for me. And you not only died for me, but you rose on the third day. Father, come into my life and take complete control. Give me the strength and give me the faith to serve you the rest of my life. Pray, Father, I thank you, Lord, for these young adults and students that made the most important decision of their life. I pray, Lord, that you'll surround them around the right people to help them grow and be everything you've called them to be. I pray, Lord, they truly will make that declaration to know you, to really know you in an intimate way. I pray, Lord, you'll use them to do greater things, greater exploits in this third wave. Use them, Lord, to be the change they want to see, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that as they continue to give their life over to you and so every day make that decision to submit over to your will, that one by one their loved ones and their family members will come to know you as well. Use them to be a light, a light that shines bright, especially in the darkest places. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Let's give the Lord a good hand. Come on. Now, if you just got saved, if you just got saved, I want you to go to my right, your left. We've got a young man flashing a light right there. So take a few moments of your time. Even if you're from another victory outreach, we want to give you the next steps. Say, I just got saved. What do I do now? Well, we just want to take a few moments just to go to connect with you, give you some resources so you can live out loud for him. So now you can, now that you know him, you can show him. So if that's you, you can go with the light, follow the light, be the light, right? Go, you can go give them a hand as they make their way, those that make their way. Come on, give them as they make their way. So awesome. So tremendous what took place here this evening. Come on. You guys maybe see we're almost done. How many, how many had a blessed time here tonight? So awesome. Now tonight is a monumental historic night. And if Sister Brittany can make her way, our gang girl multi-regional. We're not dismissed. We're almost done. We're doing something very, very special here. Like I said, God has called the SGB East region to be a model region. Say a model region. We are called to be a model region to the movement. It's not about telling and showing, but we're showing and telling. That means that we model in everything that we do. We model in mobilization. We model with our worship experience. We model with sending people to the pathways. We, we, we model in United We Can giving so that the world can see that there's a region that's on fire for God. And so, Sister Brittany, make your way. And I know we have some exciting things taking place here this evening. So maybe you can share with the region what's, what's taking place. We are raising, releasing, and doing some awesome things. I just want to say, man, Pastor X, that word is so beautiful. And aren't you just so blessed by your multi-regional? It takes such an act of faith to step out on God and just the way you gave some timely words and that word. I, one more hand. Just that was just amazing. And as I walked in, I was so blown away. What an amazing turnout for this region. There are some people standing on the Father's business here today. I really believe it that we have a fresh yes here today. And I came here today. I really wanted to get a glimpse of what's happening here at this region. But also I want to talk about the transition. We know that different mantles take place in our lives. And as we keep our yes fresh, God takes us to new levels and new levels. And tonight, I want to call up Nicole. And she's here right now. Because this is someone that modeled a fresh yes. She is an example of a great leader, a great wife a great mother, and she has taken this region to where it's at here today. Why don't you give her a hand? When I came in as a multi-regional, she was one of the first Gangle regionals, and you have just been a breath of fresh air. Nicole, I loved working with you. You've always answered every phone call, every text with a willingness, and that takes a lot. Because if you're a part of a local church, a pioneer church, you're constantly giving yourself. And she never held back. She wanted to give this region her best. And I want to say, Nicole, I appreciate everything that you've done. And right now, we want to just hear a brief word 
before we go any further from you because we're going to be passing on the mantle here tonight. Nicole's passing it on here. So let's give her a hand. And I just want to say thank you. I love you so much. I love this scripture um, in the word of God. It talks about that he begins a new thing in us. And, and I really do believe that he's going to bring it to completion. That here he started something. And that it's not done yet. You are going to new levels and new levels. And I just love that you've been such an example to this region and to this church. And so just go ahead and have a just brief word and then we'll go and pass it on. Amen. I just want to say um, I love this church and I love this region. And, and, and our, a lot of the switches that were taking place within our region. And, and now my local church is a part of a different region, a whole different multi-region. But through the changes and through it all, um, I, I love this church. And this is still the greatest region in the outreach. This is still my favorite region, the SGB East region. And, um, and, and I believe it and I love this church. And, I, and this is still my home church, still my sending church, still my uh, ascending region and and I and I love these churches in the region so well with the the new leadership I just want to say get close stay close stay close to your, uh, your new gang girl regional stay close to our our, our multi-region our new gang regional and 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 we're just uh, I'm just excited for whatever God has next and and I thought I wasn't going to be in the gang but I'm still going to be in the gang uh, um, now with some other different changes going on but I'm just excited for all that God has and 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 I love this church so you'll you're still going to see me at third wave con I'm not leaving no but um, I just want to say I love this church and I love this region. Amen. Well, Sister Nicole, we're so grateful for you. I, I've, those who don't know, I've li actually lived with Nicole in a discipleship home. So if anyone knows her, I really know her. And then vice versa, she really knows me. So I'll pray for Xavier. I'm just kidding. Um, but uh, we're so grateful. If, if for those who even don't know, she's even the one that plans all the buses. And she has all that. And I, I'm so grateful that you're in my life. And my and Xavier, I don't want to cry because I feel like I really know you just as a person. And I love you. And I'm, I'm so grateful for your life. You know, you pulled me under your wing for so many gang girl events, and, and, and you're such a great example, you know, waiting for the right one, going to university, graduating, um, having, your, having your baby. You're just a great example of a gang girl, a woman of God, a, a, a woman of a wife, a mom, and um, I'm grateful to know you, I'm grateful to call you my friend. And um, we got you some gifts as well on behalf of the SGBEs and as well as Pastor Robert and Sister uh, Veronica. We're so grateful for your life. And so actually right now, we actually have our new Gango Regionals. We have here Alexis, here from Chino, let's give her a hand. And we have Monica as well from Pomona. And so we know that we're teaming them up because we're stepping into big territory. I know earlier, like we started here tonight, we said we're stepping into new things, greater things. And we really believe here today, so let's keep on them in prayer because we know that God is doing something new and we know that God's called you to time as this. It's not a man thing, it's the God thing. And I do know that this transition was a God thing, how it happened. You guys stepped up willing and their yes is loud. And so here tonight we'll be praying them in um, right after X goes and says the new, <laughs> another announcement as well. Come on. Like I said, tonight really is historic. And so, like I said, with the great changes that were taking place, also, Sister Nicole's husband, Pastor Israel, is going to be a regional there in the northeast region. So we're, he would have been here today, but we're like sending him out too. So we reproduced another regional. So that's awesome. And West Covina got added to our region. West Covina in the building. Thriving, thriving church, thriving ministry. And so with, with, with doing that, um, I have the privilege now to be your new multi-regional. So pray for me, please. <laughs> Me and Sister Brittany, so we, we are excited and we take this responsibility to heart to continue to model to the movement. But with that, God raised up a new regional, and we have Pastor Moises all the way from West Covina. Pastor Moises, make your way. Come on, let's all stand. He is our new gang regional for the SGB East region. And also, Pastor Robert, Sister Veronica, if you can make your way. Pastor Robert, Sister Veronica. Pastor Moises, you can come right here to the center. You, you can tell how serious he takes the things of God, and I, and I love that about him. And I know that God is going to use him in a, in a mighty way, and that he's just going to, he's already been a blessing in, in my life, and I know that God is just going to 
help pro propel our region to the new things that God wants to do. So we want, I want him to share his heart with us here this evening. Amen. Praise the Lord. Can you put your hands together for Jesus? <laughs> Hallelujah. We're excited. You can sense that God is doing something brand new. Now, we know that everything under the sun, there's nothing new under the sun, but there's times when God pours out a fresh spirit, fresh encouragement, fresh revival. And I just want to thank God for, I'm a product of the gang. I got saved 16 years ago now this year, and I'm a product of the gang. And I want to thank God for my youth pastor, Pastor Enoch from Victoria Reach, Ontario. I know Ontario's in the house. Sister Jackie, everything that... They, just, they, they deposited into my life and then also our leadership, our international leadership, Pastor Ryan, our regional pastor, Pastor Rob, and, and my, my, my senior pastor, Pastor Ezra. Amen. We're under the best. We are under the best and so grateful also for Pastor Xavier. And, you know, one of the things that I noticed about him right away is his availability. His availability, his, his, his willingness to just kind of give you something every corner. Look, this is why we do this. This is why we do that. And, you know, I'm always taking everything in. I'm a student. But I would like to encourage you, every single one of you here today, if you're representing your church within the region, if we would look at it like we're not, one, we're not individual churches, but we're just one big church right here. We're one big church. And I'm grateful because I know that the West Covina team showed up strong. Amen. I know something powerful is happening there in the city of West Covina. And I know, obviously, that something powerful is always taking place here at, at the Mother Church, amen, here in Chino. But if you're here, you're representing your city, I want you to look at that and say, man, look at the resources that God has given us. He has given us churches that are on fire. He has allowed us to come here to Victoria Ridge Chino. And he has allowed us also to be close to uh, uh, our third wave, our international leadership there in Hollywood. So I would like for you to really take that. And, you know, I heard this the other day, and Sister Brittany shared it also right now. But, look, you can, you can be as close as you want to be. You can be as close as you want to be. If you get close, you get the phone numbers, you shoot the text, and, and we're going to work together because we're rooting for the success of every single church, every single gang ministry that's represented here today. So we're excited about what's taking place, and we're just so grateful for the opportunity. Amen. God bless you guys. So if you guys make your way to the center, Pastor Robert, share whatever you want, whatever you God put in your heart, and maybe you can pray for our, our new leadership. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand for this beautiful, beautiful time. You know, the Lord is bringing a fresh wind. He's bringing a fresh wind. The Bible says this. Jesus said, the Lord has anointed me. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me to preach the good news, to bring healing, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. That anointing and that fresh wind is what allowed Elijah, if you remember uh, when he girded himself and he outran a chariot, that's the anointing that God is placing upon you for this region, for this call, to help lift up the arms of our multi-regionals and lift up the arms of our founders. Even Nicole, you continue to do the same thing in whatever it is that God has for you. It's a beautiful plan. Just like Sister Brittany said, it's a great plan. You continue on that. And the rest of you that are here stepping in, remember, you're stepping in, but the anointing is upon you. And there's also a fresh wind that God is bringing in this moment. If you believe that, give the Lord a hand. Amen. So I want you to stretch your hands this way, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to pray for them. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you so much. Thank you for the powerful yes that is being demonstrated here on this platform. It's a yes is an outward expression of an inward powerful work that you have done inside of the lives of these young people. Father, as they say yes... I pray that you would anoint them to preach the gospel, to bring the good news, Father, to set at liberty those that are oppressed. And Lord Jesus, right now I pray 
that God, you would use them in such a powerful way that God, as they step out, as they step out with the mega mentality, as they step out into miracle territory, I pray, Father, as they step out and say, where is the God of Elijah? That they would see the double portion and even greater and even beyond with their own eyes. And that they would know that they would know that it is not us, but, Father, that it is you. And to you be all the glory and to you be all the honor. Protect them and camp your angels around them and their families and meet their needs, personal needs, every step of the way. Use them in a mighty way. We thank you and we love you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Everybody says amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Woo! Come on, give the Lord one more good hand. We are the SGV Beast region. Come on. So awesome. Pray you had a blessed time here this evening. Now, if you are the main gang leader or main gang team member, we would want to meet with you here in the green room. We just, myself, Sister Brittany, and the team, we just want to connect with you. So make it a point to make your way to the green room after tonight. And don't be in a rush to leave. Connect and fellowship with us. Take some pictures. Kick it there in the foyer. We love you. Stay tuned for the many great things that are going to take place in our region. Worship, you take us out with one victorious song. We'll sing it one time. You're dismissed. We love you. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. Yeah.